if you're a working mum trying to work from home in the summer holidays, you may just resonate with this podcast. Um, I've actually had this experience this morning, so I'm going to talk about um, the situation this morning and then how I overcame it with the intention of you hearing that and realizing this is an option for you too. So my husband's up in the office where I would normally work. That's where our router is. So we hard uh, when I'm in my office, I'm hardwired straight to the 500 meg download, whatever that means. And it's fast and there's no glitches and it's brilliant. Today, I'm down in our kitchen. And whilst we've got really strong Wi-Fi to the office, it struggles to boost that out to the rest of the house. Especially when there's also um, games and a couple of other phones and uh, and other devices that are pulling on the Wi-Fi. So I had a situation where my laptop just was not working. I couldn't get into my Google Calendar. I couldn't get onto my um, my Google Drive. I could I couldn't do anything. I I got kicked out of a meeting. Luckily, it wasn't with a client. Um, and <laughs> like my brain was giving me thoughts that was creating attention. And and this was where I was conflicted. I needed the internet to work, but I needed to be able to, I needed the internet to be working so that I could actually work and do my job. But I felt guilty about saying to my boys, you can't use the internet because it's struggling to have all of these devices on it through our walls. Like if we had thin walls, it might not be such a problem. But in our house, to get it all the way out to the kitchen, it struggles. And if there are devices pulling on it in between there, it's not going to get here. And so my brain, this is what was happening in my brain. It was, I don't want them to be upset. I don't want them to be bored. Um, conflicted with, I really want to serve my clients. I really want to get my work done. So there was these two conflicting thought patterns in my head. And the reason they're conflicted is for me to be able to work, they can't play on their games. And if I want them to play on their games, I can't work. And I'm in a kitchen area where when the Wi-Fi is off, I can't restrict, I don't want to restrict them to a room. So then they come out into the kitchen and maybe make more noise, which also isn't ideal. So this is the scenario, the circumstance that we're dealing with. And of course, when my brain has this confliction, I'm going to start to feel frustrated. Those thoughts in my brain are going to resonate down into my body and create an emotion. On top of that, <laughs> I'm also due for my period, premenstrual tension. As you can imagine, if you suffer with that, I was not the best version of myself this morning. What I'm able to do now, though, because I've practiced this skill so much, is I'm able to take a deep breath. And what I also notice is this pattern of how nothing's going to work, like especially leading up to my period. Nothing's going to work. We're never going to have any money. Nikki, you're pathetic. You're useless. You can't even sort the internet out. And so I just had to, all I could do this morning, because my brain was loud and because my emotions in my body were heightened, I could just breathe. <laughs> And I, at one point I stood by the kitchen, I stood by the kitchen sink. Now, obviously, if you're looking at it on me on Zoom, you can see what I'm doing. But if you're listening to this on a podcast, my head was in my hands. I was just breathing. And I was just listening to my brain. And it was just going, you can't get this sorted. You're useless. You're a really shit coach. 
you're going to make your children miserable. And it was just this negative voice loud in my head. I've got the awareness now to know that I don't need to behave from that emotion. And that's where the breathing comes in. When you take a really deep breath, that just kind of calms your nervous system down. It just calms everything down. And I was like, right, okay, Nikki, what can we try? And so I was like, right, it's not working out in the kitchen. Let's take my laptop into the lounge and try and do a process of elimination. So I went into the lounge. I looked at the the extender plug thingy. And that was red. So obviously that wasn't Wi-Fiing properly. So of course, then my extension wasn't going to be Wi-Fiing properly. So I was like, right, okay, let's figure this out. So I moved that extension out into the hallway. So now it's a little bit closer to mine. And that resolved everything for me. My my extender was then able to pick up from that extender because it was closer and they could communicate easier, which meant that then my laptop now was connected to that extender and and then I was back online (laughs) within three minutes I was back online and my boys I've just got into the lounge and I had to say to them look you're not going to be able to use the internet while I'm on a call or while I'm recording this because it pulls it pulls too much and so they've started entertaining themselves One son is playing his ukulele, which sounds lovely in the background. You can't hear it now because he stopped. And the other one's listening to his music on his phone. So isn't it fascinating? As parents were like, oh, they they have too much time on screens. They have too much time on screens. And then we make it mean that we're shit mums because we have to tell them not to have screens, although we don't really want them on screens. And then when they're not on screens, they do really lovely things. (laughs) So actually... This is a win-win situation. A couple of years ago, because I was feeling vulnerable and because I was feeling guilty, I would have shouted. I would have like said, well, you're on your screens too much anyway. And I would have been bolshy and I would have tried to justify it. But I'm so grateful that today I just sat with my emotions. Yes, I felt them. They were heightened. Yes, my brain was loud of shitty thoughts. But just breathing, having that acknowledgement, A, B, C, acknowledge what your brain is telling you and realize it's not speaking the truth. Breathe. This is the most delicious thing to do for your body when your emotions are heightened. Just breathe and see you have a choice. And sometimes that looks like putting your head in your hands at the kitchen sink and breathing. Sometimes it looks like sitting in front of your laptop, rubbing your forehead, noticing your teeth gritting and breathing. There are times when that is the most perfect thing to do for yourself. You don't need to add judgment onto that. You don't need to add a layer of criticism or shoulding or anything else because you are amazing. Your brain and your body does overcome that. And then your head is clear, the fog clears, and then you'll come up with a solution. You'll come up with a resolution. Even if that that looks like downing tools, cancelling clients, it doesn't matter. Like there's, you don't have to add the layer of judgment on top. I don't do that anymore. And that has been a skill that I have had to learn. And I have to continuously practice daily, hourly sometimes. So I really hope this episode helps you. Life isn't going to be perfect. The internet isn't going to be working all the time. And our children can entertain themselves quite beautifully when the internet isn't available. Good luck with the summer holidays. If you have any questions or you have any, yeah, but Nikki, what about this? Then let's have a chat. Let's have a conversation because I would love to talk you through what the root cause of your problem is. And it's probably not what you think it is. Have an amazing week and I'll speak to you all again next week. Oh, actually, I I will be on holiday next week, but this is pre-recorded. So um, I will, you will hear me, but actually the next recording that I do, I'll probably be talking about my holiday. So if you're away, have a beautiful time, switch off, 
shut down tools. That's what I'm going to be doing and have an amazing summer. Mwah.